Day 20 for the chicks and we've got six pens of 75 birds out on pasture today and the glorious sunshine is 18 degrees today. So it's day 20 for the chicks and they had a sudden outbreak in two of the brooder pens uh, starting yesterday evening of pecking each other's oil glands and chickens once they start to peck they start to learn from each other and they all start pecking each other so what we did is made it quite dark in here uh, today and covered the windows a bit and we also started to separate any that had sore spots we put blue spray on on the ones that had any bare skin showing so what we've done is because the weather's so nice We've taken out the two pens that were affected, which was number one and number four here. In these two pens, there's only one bird that got pecked a little bit. You might see its blue butt there. In all the other pens, in these two pens, there's was, there was no problems. We think uh, it was where sunlight was coming in, and I think they might have been getting heat stress. It's obviously quite crowded in here now as the birds go out. We're not entirely sure what happened, but it did mean that we got a bunch of the pens finished now and birds are out on pasture. Taking the birds out really young is a risk because the nighttime temperatures are low. It could even be freezing or it could even be snowing right now. It looks like it'll be about five degrees tonight. And the main thing that you want to watch for young birds coming out is wet and wind. That will really drive heat away from them really fast. But it seems like good weather that we're happy to bring them out a couple of days early. Because we've been so, if you've been watching the videos, we've been trying to get that brood warm because it was six, seven degrees in there when the chicks first arrived. And we've been concentrating so much on getting warmth in there that now the building is really heated up. And with the sun, it was 18 degrees outside today. So it's really heated up in there. And I think the birds just were getting too stressed. They're very happy to be outside. You can see we've put blue spray on some of the birds where they've had, uh, where they've been pecked. So a couple had open wounds, some are just sore. Uh, but chickens go crazy. When they see a blood spot, they'll just keep pecking at it. And so we've tried to keep them separated until the wound dried up. Now we put them outside, we put them back together again because there's so much stimulation for these birds, the first time they've seen the outdoors that it looks fine. I'm just checking through the birds as I film this and I see there's no new wounds and their wounds that uh, were there dried up nicely. So a bit of an unexpected uh, thing to have to deal with suddenly, but it has meant we've made a push to get these pens ready. So we've got most of them ready now, six out on the pasture, but there's another, uh, we're gonna have 14, 13 at the moment for nearly a thousand birds. So. Uh, some things about the design of the pens, people were asking about how we do the lids, etc. We always have a gravity-fed uh, water with a bucket and that just clips in as a standard gravity water. And then we have three quarters of the roof covered. And the same quadrants that are covered also have the protection here of some plastic because we get a lot of strong winds so we need additional shelter here. You have to pay attention to this in the middle of the summer when it's really hot because it can get like a little greenhouse in there. So you must always pay attention to what's going on. Uh, we always put the feed under these two side doors open so feeders go down under this lid to keep them dry and the waterer hangs off the open side here. Well, the roofing material, we're using a lighter weight plastic. Some people like to use metal, but it's very heavy. Everything about the design of these pens has been to keep the weight down. And so everything's bolted. So even with thin dimension timber, it's very strong, it's very rigid. They're the lightest pens we've had, and they're still really strong. And then we put fencing wire with a little insulating um, around it to protect the wood, otherwise the wire will dig into the wood just a bit of hose in the middle to, to pull there. The pens feel really good. They have a bit of flex, which is great for the undulating ground here. The layers are doing great. They're really utilizing their space more and more each day now. And they have some impact on the ground, but you see it's really greening up now. Someone was saying 
Do you leave it to go bare under them? That's precisely the opposite of what we're trying to do. We're using them to grow really good grass. This is where the birds were two days ago. But you see grass is growing now, so it looks very different already. The thing that the, like it can look a bit brown after the hens have gone through, because they're kicking up all the thatch, all the old grass, weathered grass, and they're stimulating the germination of little seedlings. I don't know if it will pick this up, but their scratching action will stimulate the germination of more seedlings, and then their manure will fertilize it all very nicely. And our grass, if you look in the aerial images, you see our grass has got a much quicker start at the beginning of the season than the neighbors because of the impact as well as the grazing of those animals. Marie is just fixing some plastic on the outside of the last pen. Uh, these are old pens from last year and one of them had uh, the plastic taken off during the summer. So she's just been fixing up and it's quite nice because it's transparent which is much better because when you're pulling these along you're always pulling the long edge either this way or from this end and because we have to have additional wind and weather protection in our climate here, it can make it hard to see the other end. This is where I'm standing if I'm pulling this along. And so you want to be able to see the other end ideally. The old pens are the same basic design, a little bit heavier build with thicker timber, but it's untreated timber because we always picked up free timber. And it's nice, but it doesn't last so long. That's why we decided to buy treated timber this time. It's going to be interesting. I'm going to come up here in the evening when I put the hens to bed, really just check how they're doing temperature wise. Often if it's a bit damp, we'll put straw down in one quarter of the roof so that they can get up off the ground. But it's perfectly dry. Looks like rain forecast for Sunday. But right now they look very happy to be out in the sun. A lot more space than there was in the brooder and grass to forage. I've seen them all like devouring little leaves and pecking at the soil, sort of working out what all the new things in their environment. So pretty similar design, but I think the ones we've just built, uh, I just hear the pigs going crazy. Reuben the boar is just chasing away uh, a young piglet. And so these are waters, the buckets are filled. Uh, these have got uh, waters inside these pens because we've run out of uh, waterers. But we just have a hose connected to the main line quick release in here that can be led out across the field as the birds go on their march. The way we've spaced this out, because we have tree lanes everywhere, we have to think a bit about the logistics. If you have a big straight field, it's very easy to pull these along in one big formation. But for us that doesn't work. So you see we've actually spaced them out. Maybe I'll overlay some drone footage and you'll see better. We've roughly estimated the amount of space they need until slaughter time. So we've divided them up into batches because when these pens go along, with the emphasis on the wind protection uh, towards the south, where the main winds come from, when we pull this pen uh, along and go round the tree lane, we, we move it this way and go back facing the pen in the same direction. Some people have made a mistake in the past of turning the pen round the opposite direction, but then it becomes a wind trap. Um, and so because we're going along, we have enough room for three pens in each of these lanes. Uh, it perfectly fits in our design. You can then turn them round the corner and come back down this way really gracefully. And if you had all of the pens in one place, it wouldn't really function very well. The garden team are doing a fantastic job. They've been putting in a lot more transplants, all the leeks, all the onions, loads of lettuce, uh, all the kales, broccolis, calabrese we're growing this year. It's really going to be a lot of vegetables this year and it's a great team. The whole team here is awesome, but it, I feel like the garden team are just already rocking it totally ahead of time and they've had a big meeting with a local um, hotel, famous hotel near us, who want a lot of supply of salads. So we might do a big change to our growing uh, calendar right in the middle of the start of the season and reduce the number of vegetable box shares and sell a lot more to restaurants directly, which is something we would like to do to support local businesses who have a bigger demand for fresh produce because we're, we are in the middle of nowhere here and it's quite hard to sell 
uh, the hundred veg box shares that we that we're growing for. So it'd be better for us to uh, nip that in the bud and not put any more effort into selling more and cater to restaurants too who it'll be nice to work with. It's really greening up a lot more every day now. It's really quick. Growth here is explosive. The Morello cherry that was in the video the other day is just coming into leaf here. The hazels are all coming into leaf. The apples are just budding up here. This is hazel here. But yeah, growth is going to boost in a little bit of rain next week and more sun and things will really radically change around here. Uh, it's a great sight to see. There's a lot of happy birds here. It's 2,000 chickens nearly in this field and they're all doing very well. The hens have been going to bed all on their own at night now. We would come and put the last sort of 10, 12, maybe 15 away at night. But if you come at the right time, they, uh, you know, it might be one or two out that we coax back in, but they, uh, they've learned to roost. They're all sitting on their roosts and I think they're happy hens. So it's now early in the morning and I've come up extra early to just check the birds. It gets light very early in the morning here. All the birds that have blue spray on their butts, all the wounds have dried up. They weren't intensive wounds anyway, but I think it's, it seems to be a developmental stage that they've sort of gone through. And certainly in these pens it seems fine. There's no birds suffered from exposure. They seem very happy and healthy. Very unusual circumstance. We've never experienced this before, but you know, it's one of those things where you're always learning and it's good to know. So I appreciate, you know, it's good to share these things and maybe some other people have had experience with that, but we've always had a kind of easy, easeful production, but they look happy and strong and super excited to see these birds grow out on the pasture. All well, for today, folks, we've got a nice weekend ahead of us. And looking forward to posting more updates next week as we get all the rest of the birds out and really start our daily pasture moves. Thanks for watching our videos. Don't forget to hit subscribe and share the videos if you think any of your friends will benefit from following our production season here in Sweden. You can find out a lot more in our book, Making Small Farms Work, available as a PDF or as a hardcover book on our website. And check out the links to Gracie's Backyard, Olivia's new film that's crowdsourcing right now if you want to see an in-depth but candid look at what goes on here in the summer from the perspective of an outside filmmaker. It's a beautiful film. So thanks for your time, really appreciate it, and see you next time.